Venice, Milan, and Rome are just some of the many places that people recommend you visit when you tell someone that you are planning a holiday in Italy. But there is one place that we will be telling you to go to, and at the end of that trip, you will be thanking us. It is the place where Columbus was born, and today it is the second busiest port in Italy. Then again, it has scenic mountains rising on either side of the city and is scattered with so many palaces and art galleries that it is difficult to count them all. Some of you might have already guessed the place that we are talking about. For those of you who have not, it is none other than Genoa, the Mediterranean beauty. Welcome back to Town Travel Tips. Today, we will be sharing with you the perfect itinerary for exploring this place in just 48 hours. Yes, it does sound impossible, but why not watch till the end to judge whether we did a good job or not? But before we go any further, if you do love the video, make sure to hit that like button and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. Let us get right into it. Like any other place across Italy, Genoa has plenty of things that you should not miss out on, so buckle up because your two days here are going to be quite busy. Getting to Genoa is far from a headache. It has a well-connected airport and you can avail the railway across the Italian countryside as well. You will also find a place to stay without any hassle as the city is quite popular among tourists and there are plenty of options to choose from. Try to get a place in the Piazza dei Ferrari to Brignol area, which is not far away from the coastline but not away from the center of the city as well. The place to start your first day at Genoa would be undoubtedly the Palazzi del Roli area. The Genoese have always resisted a strictly hierarchical government and consequently they have no publicly owned grand palaces. Instead, they have a series of palazzi that were, and often still are, owned by important families. In fact, this is a UNESCO heritage site. All of this also means that not all palaces have public access, but luckily, the most important ones like the Palazzo Bianco and the Palazzo Rosso are always open throughout the year. People rent these palaces out for grand occasions like weddings or go to see their art collections or just visit their roof gardens. There are around 144 palaces across Genoa which means you really must make some choices here instead of exploring them all because you and I both know we do not really have a lot of time on our hands. Near the Porta Soprana, you will find the old Columbus's house, or at least so it is told. Yes, Columbus did sail in the Spanish ships, but you need to remember that he was Genoese, not Spanish. All of this will take an entire morning, more perhaps, so by the time you have walked around Piazza dei Ferrari, we can guarantee that your stomach will be growling. For lunch, you should try out the local flatbread, focaccia, at least once. It comes in a huge variety, such as the focaccia al formaggio, which is made with cheese. You can also go for the farinata, a pancake that is made with chickpeas flour served with pesto, which is a typical Ligurian sauce made with basil. Trust us, you will be licking your cutlery at the end of the meal and wishing there was more. After that delicious meal, head to the San Lorenzo Cathedral. This was built to hold what were said to be the relics of John the Baptist and has a lot of stories associated with it as the locals believe that this place is haunted by the workmen who built it. But you will be going during daytime, so why worry? From the cathedral, it is a short walk to the Porto Antico area. Of course, with such a beautiful coastline and being a place where you just cannot avoid the sea, Genoa does have one of the biggest aquariums in Europe. Pre-book your tickets when you can spend the afternoon with sharks, penguins, and dolphins. While in Genoa, it will be a sin to go for anything that is not Italian food. And why would you even look at other options when Italian cuisine has so much to offer? If you want the good old traditional Italian pizza, there are plenty of options starting from Sorbio at Piazza della Vittoria. If you are in the mood for pasta, try the pesto and Ligurian dishes such as a Trattoria Rosmarino at Piazza di Ferrari or some delicious focaccia in Zina Zuena at Via Cesaria. Your taste buds will never forget these meals and you will have a good night's sleep. As we said earlier, Genoa is a port city. This means that wherever you go, you get a whiff of the Mediterranean Sea. The city looks out to the sea from all corners, which will give you plenty of beautiful pictures for your travel album. But even if you did miss out on experiencing the sea air on day one, don't worry, because day two is going to be all about the sea and the sun. Take a train from Brignol Station to Camoli, which is a beautiful fishing port. The journey takes only 30 minutes, and you will love this small town with its peculiar tiny houses and the beach. 
There are not any historical places here, so it is all just about exploring the local alleys and getting a first-hand experience of the Genoese culture. If you do not want to spend a lot of time here, you can also get a boat from the old port to the monastery of San Fruccioso. With the unforgettable views and a sense of calmness here, you will feel all your worries go away. You might think that we are exaggerating here, but once you come back from the vacation, you will probably go on to say that we were not even close to describing how it feels like. Your day with the sea and around will take up quite a long time, but even then, you will have the entire evening to go around Genoa. You can stop for a cup of coffee and some local cake at Cafe Daily Speci, which is known to be one of Genoa's classic coffee houses. Eat more focaccia because it's never enough, and you will surely not get a better version of it in any place except Italy. Also, sample some Ligurian savory pies with rice, spinach, and more. Since it is your last night in Genoa, why not indulge some more? Ever heard of an aperitif? It is a drink that is extremely common in many parts of Italy, which is taken before and not after your food. A place you can check out is the Via di Sant'Agnese, which is a trendy watering hole not far from the university. Wine here is served from seven huge vats. If you are confused with the range of options, try the white wine from Luni, a favorite of the Romans. Walk around the Piazza dei Ferrari, which is the city's heart. It is right from here that the medieval old town and a tangle of ancient alleyways run down the old port. Imagine yourself to be in the 18th century Genoa, which was bustling with sailors and workers relaxing after a long, hard day. It will not be difficult to do so as you sit on a bench and go through all the pictures you have taken on this wonderful vacation. Have you been to Italy? Was Genoa on your travel list? Or have you already visited Genoa before? Let us know what it was like in the comment section below because we love hearing from you. Also, if you love the video, do make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to support more videos like this. We will be back very soon. Ciao!